Hi everyone, my name is Pauline McIntosh and I work with the St. Evex Extension Department and I'm leading Build Together, strengthening the community housing sector in Nova Scotia initiative. With me today, I have my colleagues, Nancy O'Regan and Renee Hebert. Nancy? So my name is Nancy O'Regan. I'm from Guysborough County and I have a long history in working in community development. And I'm really pleased to be asked to work with Pauline again after 20 years um, and work on this project. I currently am the co-chair of the Guysborough County Housing Network and we're one of those organizations that's just getting started along this journey. So really glad to be part of this process. Oh, thanks, Nancy, and I'm really thrilled to have you here with me. And you reminded me, I should also mention that in my volunteer life, I am the coach, uh, the vice chair of the Antigonish Affordable Housing Society. So this work is really near and dear to, to both of us yeah. in, a, in our personal lives as well as professionally. Renee. My name is Renee Hebert. I'm the program manager at the Community Housing Transformation Centre, and we are partnered with St. Effects Extension to do this very important work. The centre provides two funding opportunities uh, related to capacity building and tenant empowerment. Uh, it's great to have you both with me this afternoon. Um, I'm really pleased that we've been able to come together and talk about Consultation C for the Build Together project. Uh, and as you both know, this project is all about strengthening the community housing sector in Nova Scotia. I can't believe we're at Consultation C already. My I don't goodness. know how this happened. The time went so fast. Yeah, it seems like it was just March and we had started on our project journey and begun the very first consultation reaching out to people across the province who are working in the community housing sector. We heard from a lot of people across the province from various communities and types of organizations and they had so much to say about what they think is really important and what needs to happen. And now it's time to think about what kind of a structure, uh, what kind of a form might be best suited to help us create those changes that the sector would most like to see. Mm -hmm. Nancy, do you want to walk us through a little bit about structuring work and some of the wisdom from, from the past that we, we certainly know well and could share with others? Well, you know, we've done a lot of work in the past helping organizations get started both locally and provincially and in some cases, you know, regionally. And it's really important that um, the structure of an organization is created in a way that honors what the functions are. So that means whatever that group intends to do, what its goals are, what it wants to achieve, needs to have an appropriate and suitable structure to make that happen. And we have a little quote here we want to share with you about structure. That structure is more than a series of boxes and lines neatly arranged on a chart. It reflects the way a coordinating group carries out its activities and achieves its goals. It also reflects how individuals and organizations relate to each other, as well as the lines of authority and communication. And a really important one is decision making. Absolutely. And that's, that's really of critical importance, uh, given where we find ourselves in the greater context of need for affordable housing, not just locally and provincially, but nationally and, and even further mm -hmm. afield. Great. So, Renee, are you still with us? Yes, I am. Oh, thanks, Renee. And at this point, we would like to walk you folks through three potential models for organizing the work of the community housing sector provincially. So the first of the provincial housing models that we want to share with you is called the nonprofit. That's the form. And I'm sure that you are all very familiar with nonprofit organizations. I'm sure you've belonged to one or led one. It's a very common form of organization that we see in our society. In terms of the community housing sector, uh, just to put a little definition around it, a nonprofit would simply be an association of community housing sector organizations, both informal and formal, and the organization would likely be member based, it would have centralized services, and it would likely be governed by a board of directors. Renee, is there an example from the research that you did, a model that uh, falls under, under the nonprofit category that you could share with us? Yes. The British Columbia Nonprofit Housing Association is a great example. They uh, have the mission of empowering BC nonprofit housing sector through advocacy, education, and support with, in, with collaboration, integrity, resilience, and inclusion. The bulk of their funding comes from uh, what they call partner programs. Um, 
BCNPHA, as we call them, has several partner programs that benefit member organizations. The purpose is to enact the economy of scale for cost savings to members, and it also helps fund the organization. Where they, they thrive as well is in capacity building. Asset management services is one important service that they provide, benchmarking, building condition assessments, capital planning, free energy audits, and retrofit co coaching, which is very important to all the organizations. They have a, a lots of education um, initiatives, such as their, their convention, their annual convention, which is the largest housing uh, community housing convention in Canada. They also have webinars, housing you courses is what they call them and modules and property management forums. They collaborate together by having round tables to connect the regions as well. So they have lots to offer to the organizations that benefits them and builds capacity um, and supports the community housing sector. Nancy, could I ask you to walk us through a little bit of information around a distributed services and program programs model? I can do that, Pauline. A distributed service and programs model is, you know, a little bit like the status quo. You know, we currently have a lot of organizations in the province working on community housing. Some are doing research, others are providing navigation services, some are working with building the strength of organizations, and others are private consultants that work on technical support and help organizations at various stages. But what we're talking about here is that what would be funded would be individual organizations and groups and sometimes individuals, but that there would be a, a, a coordination and a collaboration through some form of a provincial organization that would sort of, you know, group these groups together and that would make sure that those contracts and that work is being done, you know, equally and fairly and well distributed across the province. So it's a different model than what we're used to. It's a bit like what we have now, only with an added layer of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So Nancy, that would really help illuminate some of the great research that's going on mm -hmm. across the province, mm -hmm. some of the interesting lessons that are, people are learning, but it wouldn't really change what's happening a whole lot, would it? No, it would make for a bit better coordination with mm -hmm. government. Probably it would provide um, an organization that issues and concerns that were being heard across the province could sort of bubble up to government in a much mm -hmm. more direct way, but it doesn't really build the capacity of community organizations. Okay. Okay, interesting. The final model that we'll share with you is a community-based organization. That's the form that a provincial model could take for the community housing sector. And essentially, it would be comprised of local housing organizations, again, both informal and formal, mm -hmm. who are supported by regional teams and then linked provincially. And this sort of system would really allow the voice of local communities uh, to be well heard, and yet coordination and collaboration could happen at the regional level, mm -hmm. and then linking all of that together provincially to form that strong voice that could serve the sector as a whole very well. And Renee, I think you found a couple of examples uh, of this kind of a structure in the province of Quebec. Yes, so Quebec has the provincial association, however, connected to that association and where the whole where the association comes from is there was there are eight federations throughout the province and it covers all the territories and all the regions in the province and the association was basically formed by these these federations getting together and then creating the the uh, provincial association um, they all provide services within their own region and they don't necessarily all provide the same services. It's mm -hmm. all based on the needs uh, of their particular areas that, uh, uh, regions that they work in. Um, that Those federations got together as well and they created uh, an organization, well, not an organization, it's, it's called Corporation du Logement Communautaire du Québec, C-O-L-O-C-K, uh, C-Q. And their mandate is, is, is to help community housing projects facing serious difficulties and to put them back on track. Mm -hmm. So they go from intervening the most complex cases, accompanying groups in, difficult, in difficulty and safeguarding the social mission of their buildings and build trust with governmental authorities in order to solve the complex situations. So lots of great services and very unique uh, in its, its form in terms of like each federation um, has an opportunity to really serve their community uh, the way they need to be served. 
Thanks, Renee. And Renee, I look forward to hopefully uh, hosting an online session where we can talk more about that model as well. And if people probably have questions that they would uh, be happy to, to, uh, to ask of you. I don't want to take up too much of people's time, Nancy. I know we've been talking for quite a long while. But uh, the title of this session is, is called Your Voice, Your Vision. So we really want to make sure that we have an opportunity to hear from all of the people in, in Nova Scotia who are working in the community housing sector. So at the end of this video, you will see a link to Consultation C survey. The survey is really brief. There are only four questions. And you'll be asked to indicate in this survey uh, which of these three provincial organization models will enable Nova Scotia's community housing sector to achieve its desired changes? And it's all laid out really clearly for you. And it's only you. going to take five minutes. Five minutes we tops. We promise. Five yeah. minutes survey. <laughs> and the results of the survey will be used by the Build Together team to create a roadmap uh, for how the province will strengthen the community housing sector. And Nancy, we've got some other good opportunities coming up for folks in September as well, mm -hmm. don't we? So that panel we were talking about is going to take place in September. Then we're going to invite representatives, and I think we have them confirmed from other provinces, to just speak a little bit about how their models work, mm -hmm. um, what some of the costs are, what some of the benefits are, and, and just to help give people a bit more information. Um, we're also going to have two other open discussion groups so that people who just want to join the Zoom, talk to Pauline and I, ask questions about the models, maybe mm -hmm. Renee can share a little bit more, and before people complete the survey, to have an opportunity to gather as much information as they need to feel they're making a really informed decision. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping those three opportunities give people a bit more to go on so that they can make a decision they feel comfortable with. Yeah. The idea here is to give people as much information as we have about the ways we could proceed uh, to develop this roadmap to strengthen the community housing sector in Nova Scotia. This really is your voice and your vision. Uh, the Build Together project has been designed to talk with the people who are doing the work in the community housing sector. And we'd really appreciate hearing from you so that your voice and your vision is part of whatever roadmap is created mm -hmm. Um, by our team for the province of Nova Scotia's community housing sector. And you will see the links to the survey and other resources that might help you in providing that input. And you'll also see the links where you can register for the panel discussion as well as the discussion groups that will be happening uh, later this month. Renee and Nancy, I really want to thank you for coming together with me today and having this discussion. You're very welcome. I'm really excited to see where we're going to go next I in the Build Together can't project. Wait to, can't wait to see where that roadmap takes us. Renee, how are you feeling about it? It's great. I look forward to hearing from the organizations across the province. If you have any questions, concerns, please give me a call or come out to one of our online engagement sessions. We look forward to speaking with you then. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Nancy. Have a great day. You as well. Bye-bye.